welcome back to Maps Insider. Now, Ro, tell us about this awesome new light show. Oh, yeah. The Mavericks have all types of bells and whistles. We're behind the scenes right now, but we're going to take you behind the scenes way upstairs and show you what goes down right here. All the new stuff right here. Mavs Insider. Let's check it out. Of course, when you step into the AAC, you see the spectacular opening before the players come out, and you might want to know just how it's done. Well, we're going to show you how it's done. We're going to show you the brand new tweaks that are going into the opening of the Mavericks game right here, top bird's eye view of the AAC. And these gentlemen right here, they're the ones that are going to show you how it's done. Of course, here with the creative director for the Dallas Mavericks, Mr. Cash Roy. So tell me a little bit about this brand new opening, the, the new bells and whistles that are going to go along with the brand new opening. As it turns out, um, the lights that we had in this facility, they're, you know, 10, 15 years old, but they're still of higher quality than a lot of the arenas in the NBA. So we're just kind of taking the time to create a little something special that, you know, a lot of times there's not enough time to, you know, tweak every little bit of an open presentation. We've, we've got a lot of great production people that uh, put the video together and the audio together, but the lights are sometimes forgotten. And plus it's an afterthought to a lot of people that they just kind of take that in as an ambient uh, bit of the open. What we're trying to do is take every single second and create a moment in time that'll be a goosebump situation for the Mavs fans. As soon as the lights go down, what you'll notice is that um, now when things go dark, the lights will take over and the audio will take over and there will be a goosebump moment to create the drama in the arena before the video actually starts. And then every bit of the video is going to be augmented by the lights as well. So the timing and the production value and the thought that goes into every second of what you're going to see even before the ball goes in the air is going to be that much uh, further down the line now. So this is something that's never been done with any of the NBA teams before, correct? I think every NBA team does something in lighting, but the amount of time and talent and thought that's being put into this open is going to be something different than most NBA arenas have, yeah. Now you talk about something different. Let's talk about the reinforcements. You know, the gentleman that you've brought in off the bench from out of town, out of the NBA, to assist you with this program. Chris Carota is the uh, lighting designer for the band Fish. He's also worked with Aerosmith and R. Kelly and the Black Crows, a lot of big rock bands. And so he knows a little something about spreading the love light-wise to the entire arena. And specifically, one of the things that he likes to do is, and that's different than other NBA uh, arenas, is the canvas is not just the basketball court. The canvas, for lack of a better term, is the entire arena. So every Mavs fan is now going to be part of the action, but the, they're going to feel like they're immersed in the entire open presentation as opposed to just looking at it. So that's, uh, that's the feeling that we're going for. And uh, I think hopefully once you come and check it out, you're going to get a goosebump moment. So I got the, the man that's controlling the actual lights, Marion. So, so you're actually in charge of everything that goes on lighting-wise in the American Airlines Center. Well, as far as the automated lighting is concerned, we have a system of 24 uh, automated lighting fixtures that are strung throughout the uh, arena. Some are on the center hung scoreboard that the fans see, and then some are up on the terrace levels. And so the console that you see behind you here is actually controlling those fixtures during the game, during the opening and so forth. And then I'm responsible for the programming of that so and making alterations as things change throughout the season and so forth. So th there's a number of events that come to the American Airlines Center, whether it's concerts, special events, and of course sporting events. So this is kind of a situation to where you're kind of meshing the two together, correct? Well, and this is a little different. I mean, Concert tours and so forth typically bring their own automated lighting system in here where the American Airlines Center here in Dallas actually has a dedicated system. So I guess in a way it's, it's, it's different. It's not, it's, there's really no connection other than what we're trying to do during the game presentation is create an atmosphere with the lighting to en augment and enhance the video that's going on and so forth. So they're a little bit different beast, I guess, you know, dealing with sports teams versus concert touring and so forth. You're usually in the arenas when it comes time doing concerts, correct? But now you're moving to the NBA. How is this transition working? It's a lot different. Uh, concerts are a lot more, uh, you have a lot more freedom with smoke in the air and things like that. So you can see all the beams NBA. There's a lot of rules for the game that you have to watch out for. So we're under a lot of constraints and we have to kind of try to be creative and artistic given the canvas that we're given. So it's been a challenge, 
but it's real exciting to be doing stuff for the NBA and coming up with cool ideas and thinking outside the box, so to speak. So Now, just to give the people an idea, just name, I guess, some of the, not, not to name drop, but I guess tell some of the people that are watching the show, who are some of the artists that you've worked with before? Well, I have uh, worked for a band called Fish, P-H-I-S-H, for about 25 years now. And then in my off time, I've done people like Aerosmith, R. Kelly, Black Crows, um, I design festivals, music festivals around the country, um, yeah. little different things like that. So, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. So, of course, you're, you're very, very well experienced, of course, I should say, right? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. So so what are some of the things that the fans will notice when they're actually watching the pregame intros? Like walk us through the step by step, some of the things that you're going to be adding. One of the things we're doing differently is we've created about a 15 second dark time where the lights will go out and board the video will come on we have this 15 seconds to kind of do something cool and interesting just with the lights so we kind of came up with this thing where we're gonna light the horse head there in the middle of the center of the court and we'll have a really cool sound effect to go with that and then we're gonna kind of swirl the lights out from there and we'll have another sound effect and people will see that they'll know what I'm talking about when they see it and then from there on in once that those two things have happened the video will start and then from there, we're trying to have the lights really follow what's going on in the video very specifically to each moment so that it's not just a real random thing. Uh, in the video, there's a sunset. So we've created a sunset with the lights in the room for that moment and just kind of gone through the video second by second and try to come up with ideas that really match what's going on sound and video. So we're just trying to kind of tie it all together and integrate it and make the entire experience be one single entity all working together as opposed to sound and video and lights all doing three different things. So we're trying to kind of just gel it together, make it one. I'm pretty sure all the Mavs fans will be happy. We're going to leave it all on the floor. Look out for their pregame intros coming soon. Wow, that was really awesome. Maybe Chris can light one of my concerts. Uh, yes, Allie. After all, I mean, he works with rock stars. Oh, I'm not a rock star yet. Not yet. Not yet. But you will be. Yes, and coming up next, one of our favorite rock stars, Mike Fisher. Fish stories. We'll be right back. Next.